What's up, everyone? All right, so in this episode, I am joined by three other traders, Hamong, Max, and Danny. And we're going to talk and give you the state of the market address for uh, this week here. And we're going to talk about kind of where we're at on the year so far. We're six weeks into the year, and it's a good chance to kind of level set, like, how does this year feel so far? Are we moving in the right direction? And then we're going to talk about a couple specific trades on MSGM and maybe a few others because we did just have this sort of burst of momentum over the last week and a half. So we'll break that down. But um, you guys hear from me enough. So why don't we get started with Danny? And uh, Danny, you know, how's this year feeling so far for you? Um, it's it's a good question. I think how is it feeling is really difficult. Um, how am I doing is really pretty well. I good. am really focused on my strategy that I know works well for me. Um, I wasn't really happy at all with how I performed in 2022. And so I took a lot away from that of how I want to adjust my trading this year. And I'm really focused on on my own strategy and um, trying not to make the same mistakes I was making last year, at yeah. least not as much, um, not as badly, you know, just trying to do a little bit better. And it's been working out for me so far this year, but um, it's been really difficult. Uh, it's it's a really difficult time in the market right now. It's very choppy, but um, I've been doing well to avoid a lot of the chop and trying to, trying to just be really patient and get good entries and good trades. One of the things that I know about you you are trading with TD Ameritrade. You have no commissions. And since we have no commissions, at least last year, I saw a lot of days that I might have thought you were over trading, like, like yeah. coming in long hours, just oh, tra yeah. and trading and trading and trading. And I'm like, you know, I go run some errands. I come back and you're like, I'm in this. I'm in that. I'm but, like, my God, he is still going at it. So on the, but on the one on the one hand, you know, there's a downside. You're over trading, I think, maybe. But on the other hand, you do gain a lot of experience doing that. It's a lot of time in the chair. How are you reining that in? Or are you still trading like all through the day? So that was one thing about last year that I wasn't too happy with. Being on TD, of course, I don't pay for every trade that I make, you know, unless it's a red trade. So I'm not disincentivized from just taking any trade that I feel I want to take. Um that definitely solidified some bad habits in my trading that I think really hurt me in 2022, where you were really not paid or rewarded for sticking around. Um, at the same time, I did learn a lot from the mistakes that I was making, and I seem to be doing better with that coming into this year. And um, I was actually writing just some thoughts down yesterday, and one of the things that I wrote down was that I have been really happy with how I've pretty much been trading the morning session lately and just getting out. Um, one of the realizations that I kind of came to was if I wanted to make more money on that day, I should have taken bigger size on the setups that I knew were good. And I should have tried to figure out how to avoid some of the losses. Mm. And then aside from that, like, just over trading when there's less volume through the middle of the day and there's just no range. It just doesn't make sense that I'm wasting energy. You saw me say that. I was thinking about something similar this morning at, when I was looking at CELZ because, and I know Max, you were trading it this morning too. So CELZ, leading gapper, my PNL's on the screen. So you guys on YouTube will be able to see it. Um, but, you know, I, I felt like I ended up missing this kind of big candle that went from 115 up to 136. I looked down for a second. I was like recording one of my stupid YouTube shorts and I look back up and I'm like, oh my God, it's at 135. I just missed it. And then I kind of overcompensated by trading it a lot. You know, an area where it had like no range, it had like an eight cent range and I'm like in and out with big size, making nothing, turning commissions. And Sometimes I think like there was a there were a couple of really good opportunities today, and there'll probably be a couple of good opportunities every day. I need to try to hit those hard, and then when it gets choppy and range bound, just like yeah. seriously slow down with share size until it opens up again. Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes they, they do open up again, but other times they don't. And then I'm looking at all my trades or the range where it was choppy. 
one of so a follow up thought on that. Um, one of the traders in our community for anybody on YouTube who's not aware, uh, we've got this guy Vanoli. Yeah, he is animal. Yeah, um, every now and then he just drops these little tidbits that are so important. And one of that recently was something about all I need is range and volume. And with those two things, you can make, there are trades that are worth taking. And I have done really well to kind of internalize that lately. It's like, is this just kind of like range bound five to 10 cents, or is it actually going to give me a move that's worth trading? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been really good for me. And then whenever something is kind of range bound, I've been doing a good job to just not trade it because those can be really tough. They can really suck you in to over trading, getting really frustrated and then like having a really, having a day that you really didn't plan for. Yeah. I agree. Good point. So, all right. Well, so Max, um, what about you? Where are you at? Um, you know, these first six weeks of the year, are you feeling like you're off to a good start or churning or? Yeah. Um, first six weeks so far, I'm off to a pretty solid start especially compared to how quarter four was for me good from september to november i was read at three weeks that those were three red months in a row i've never had two months two red months in a row so that was a really tough one to overcome but i mean as of right now the start of the year i feel like we've been getting more volume uh more opportunities and like danny said though too it, i think this is a market that's gonna be really hard to learn in for a lot of new um, traders but at the same time though too uh you know you're rewarded for the good setups you're taking but you're also Punished for the bad set of secret also feed. So it's kind of hand in hand. You're going to learn a lot easier at it. Um, but I mean, one thing that I really want to take into this year though too that I'm already noticing is that my red days are significantly bigger than my green days. Last year too, I over-traded just like Danny. So I'm trying to get out earlier so that I don't kind of you know, go on safe habit of trying to get out of my red days to get out of the hole. Um, but that's kind of so far for me. I'm noticing that there's some decent moves to capitalize off of that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we. I, I felt like well, I mean, it's a it's a matter of my my actual statistics. January was better than December, and it was better than November, and it was better than October. It was the best month I'd had since September. Uh, so January was better for me. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm starting to get into a groove. I had one red day, which was a little bit of a bigger red day, uh, but I had a lot, I didn't have any big green days, but I had a lot of kind of nice base hit days and they added up, you know, 19 or so base hit days in one red day, you know, 20 days in the month, give or take. That was not too bad. And February so far has been kind of that continuation of base hit days. Today for me, it's like another base hit day. It's not a big green day, but you know, 20 days like today, they certainly add up as long as I don't have those big red days that are you know, drawing against it. Come on, what about you? Uh, hey guys. So for me, you know, the year has not been treating me that well. Uh -oh. I am in a drawdown. Trouble in paradise. And, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, at the end of last year, I was doing fine. October, November, I was just treading through. And then I had my first red month in uh, December. And I was also on a trip to India, Bali, Singapore, and I was trimming a little bit there, uh, but, you know, when I came back, I just wanted to, I, I saw that I missed, you know, really great moves in the market. So I guess I had a little FOMO. Yeah. And that just made me just want to come in swinging. And, you know, I, I you know, called myself, started slowing down. And then, you know, I, it, and then I was on this journey where I was just, you know, I really decreased my goal down to like next to nothing. I'm like, I just want a green day. Yeah. Very small green day is fine. And then, you know, it's making these small increments and then all of a sudden, boom. And then small increments, all of a sudden, boom. So I'm still red on the year. Uh, but I think I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too, too red on the year. Uh, I'm just, just, just about at break even or lower. But, you know, that's, that's my story. And you know, just to reiterate what Max and uh, Danny said. This market is really hard because it can really punish your mistakes. It can really punish the bad moves. And, you know, the the good moves that you make, the good trades that you take are not super rewarding. So it could be really, you know, you have to be really mindful. Coming from someone like me, I added so much to my arsenal last year. 
I was trading all kinds of setups, you know, just added, I just kept adding more and more and more. And well, yeah, it was true that it was making me more. I did make a lot, of, you know, make a lot from those moves. And I was happy with that. But now is my time to just, you know, bring it down and just close off to a few setups that I can nail and make consistent amount of money. It's not about how much money. I don't need to be making a lot of money. I just need to be making that consistent profit, do my work and get out. And yeah, I was also with Danny, you know, sitting all day. I think 2021, I was sitting there like all day on my screen. 2022, halfway through, I just started getting up and just leaving. You know, at around like 11 o'clock. Yeah. You know, Max was doing that too. Like just towards the end of yeah. 2022, we we're just getting up and just leaving at around like 10 30, 11, 11 30 max. Uh, and this year, I've been doing the same. But some days I'll stick around just a little bit and then definitely. You know, dangerous time right now for me, at least, is from 11 to uh, 2.30. And then I'll, I'll sometimes I'll come back at like 3 to 4 to see what's going on. But, you know, it's been dead in the afternoon. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Yeah, I mean, I... Listen, look, I, I feel you being on the drawdown. And um, I... I didn't have a very good finish to the year last year. I was really bummed out because I had like, I was like, August was my best month of the year, which is totally atypical. And yeah. then I was like, okay, I have the goal for what I want to do in September, October, November, December. And if I do that, I'm going to finish the year at this. And then I came up like, actually, I was a, I was above it in September um, by 30%. And then I was, I was like way below it in October, way below it in November not even close in December. And I was like, wow, okay, that goal is out the window. And I kind of had to come back to this, just be consistent right now. I'm doing the best I can. There's just not as much to sing my teeth into. And I think it's a combination of, you know, we had this crazy 2020, 2021 trading surge, tons of liquidity, tons of momentum. And now you know, you've heard from all these broker dealers, you know, fewer customers and this and that, and the question about what's going to happen with payment for order flow. And there's the, and the bear market. And I think all of that has um, zapped some of the liquidity out of the market. And so we've had some volatility, we've had some range, but sometimes when we have it, it's not very liquid. So it's like, well, I can't even size into this thing. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's something might go up five points, but then I could never have bought 20,000 shares to capture it without a ton of slippage. And that that's kind of a bummer. Um, so it's, yeah, I've been kind of just in that mentality of like just catching those base hits. I, yeah, I've also been dealing with uh, that thing about, you know, not being able to size in. Because I was used to taking huge sizes, you know, and then I've only kept going up from like 2020 the 2021 and then 2022 and then now that i have to i don't mean there's been periods where i had to size down you know just because i'm going to draw down or I just have to tighten up a little bit until you know i'm in a better spot then i can size up again but you know right now uh you know i, I guess i just want to ask you guys that for those that are listening that you know have been trading for a while or are barely profitable how to like kind of navigate through going up and down in size and just navigating that area of when to size up and when to size down so I mean, for me, I'm just size down. I'll just take like, you know, maybe a few thousand shares. And if not, I'll just take a thousand shares. That's what I'm doing right now. Danny, Max, what about you guys? Um, I am, so for for the people watching who don't know, I'm, a, I'm not quite as a large or aggressive as a trader as Max and Hamong yet. Uh, Max and Hamong can load up. 10, 20, 30,000 shares on stuff. I'm still working up, uh, you know, one, two, three, 5,000 shares. So I am, since I'm doing well with my strategy right now, I'm still trying to size up. Um, so for me, like most of 2020, I was probably taking trades with between one to 2,000 shares. Um, today, my biggest position I was holding was 5,000 shares. So I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm trying to load up on those plays that I think are really high quality. And um, that's my strategy at the moment. I'm still trying to size up, but mostly just because, you know, I'm not in a drawdown. Um, I've been seeing consistent 
success with my strategy. Um, so to me, that means, you know, take more size. I don't, I don't really want to be just totally comfortable all the time. Um, at the same time, we just have to take what the market gives. Um, Ross, you were talking about, you know, your plans for like September, October, November, the rest of the year, last year. And it just makes me think, you know, we, we all have these plans and expectations and then, and then the market doesn't care. Yeah, Um, totally. You just you just have to trade what is actually happening in front of you as best as you can, and kind of listen to what's happening with your results from that. Yeah, no, that's a really really good point. I mean, that's like you know being a surfer and going out and being like, I'm going to catch big waves today, and then you go out and there and there's nothing there. It's like, okay, I guess that's not happening. But I mean, you could. I feel like with that, you could. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to think that you'd be like. Yeah, it's not even worth trying, but with trading, it can be easy to kind of lie to yourself in a way and be like, there's enough here for me to really try. And I know for me, like when I do that and I'm like in this grind of like really struggling to make like a couple of small winners, that then when I have a stock that ends up being really clean, I'm like, whoa, night and day. Like, why was I driving myself crazy with all that chop before? It's it's such it's such a mindset thing, and your analogy right there was just making me think. You know, I live out near the coast here in California. I go surfing. Um, I think it's just totally your expectations. Like, sure, a head high day on you know really nice breaking waves is awesome, but if that's not what's happening, I'll take out my longer board and just enjoy the nice day out on the coast. I'm not going to be looking for those same waves if it's not happening. I'll just you know have fun and have a good day so i think it's kind of hard to do with trading it's not it's like you yeah. can't really just like have fun and like hang yeah out right. lose like yeah. Some, yeah. some like i don't know it's uh, the main point with that is like if you're not happy to like head high barreling days in the market yeah. don't expect it and swing for it because then you're gonna be really pissed off about why you're out oh, there. that's me that's me for sure i'll be taking a couple thousand shares and then i'm like Oh, this is the one. I mean, boom! I saw them, and I got punished really bad. I think, I, and that's what, that's my that's been my struggle because it's such an ego related thing. I feel like it just my ego just takes a huge hit when I'm when I have the size down from twenty thousand shares to two thousand shares because yeah, yeah. it's so many. It, it comes back to expectations, right? My expectations are that I'm taking that, and I need to be making at least this much, right? Whatever number that is, I need to be making at least this much from the market, but. At the back of my head, I have to be real with myself that this is not the market. But, you know, ego is also like kind of a thing that is not going to let you realize that it's going to make you so emotional in the moment that, no, this is it. And you just jump in. So you have to be really mindful and practice outside of trading that, you know, this could happen. These are the scenarios that I can run into. And even at those in those scenarios, when I am down, not to go back and revenge trade, just go and find a quality setups. And if not better, just get up and come back tomorrow. Yeah. Mark, That's a huge point. Uh, I agree with that. What about you? Yeah, I know. Honestly, I like that you say something about expectations, though, too, because I think it's so difficult to control your emotions when you come off a really big green day yeah. or a really big green streak and then try and size up the next day expecting the same momentum. That's the thing about trading, though, is if you can come into each day, even after a big green day, and expect nothing out of it, I think that's what's going to set you up most at least for success. And I can speak from this too, from last week, I had a really big green day. The next day, I lost more than I made the day before. Uh, and that sucks. You know, it, it's not easy going from a day to two. However, though, I like to think of red periods or red days as a learning lesson though too. Because uh, last quarter or last uh, quarter four, I should say last year, there was a period where I didn't size down just like you, Ross. I had a really good August month. That was my best month ever, best month of the year. Uh, in September, I was expecting, you know, similar results. So yeah. I wasn't able to size down so, and I kept the same shear size and I got chopped up on crazy. So I took a mass pit off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it took me a little too long to size down my size and I like, not know anything about it. But yeah. again, expecting nothing though from each period or each day, I think it's going to be the best though for your shear size or for, I guess, profits. Too. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, for me right now, I feel like I want to try to hit the one or two really good setups with more size to make them count 
So that for me might be like 15 or 20,000 shares. I, I, I was trading with a cap uh, through from like maybe May or June of last year until sort of towards the end of the year. I was keeping him pretty solidly under 10,000. Sometimes I would go to 15. Occasionally I let myself go up a little higher, but very rarely. But more recently I've been more comfortable starting with 10 and going to 15 or maybe 20. Today I went a little higher on CELZ because it was cheap. It was like a dollar twenty cents or something, but yeah, it was thirty five thousand, thirty seven thousand shares. But in any case, I'm kind of trying to hit those those one or two trades with a little bit more size to make them count, and then just like get out earlier. And that you know, I I really do struggle with that because I do get FOMO, and you know, on MSGM last week. To show you guys the chart for those that are watching, you know, I, I really got some pretty bad FOMO on that one. Uh, this is the one that Max did really well on. And then, um, who was it? MSGM. Max did really well on it on the first day and then gave back those profits on day two. I had a really close call on day two, like sizing up early pre market. And so, like, if we look at that one um, and Maybe what what was your for all of you guys you know the four the four of us or three of us, three of you um, when you were trading MSGM like what was your kind of take on it were you all trading it pretty early because or were you did you wait until it started to open up for me it was pretty much right at the open uh, I would I would wait for it uh, to start to open up a little bit uh, mostly though what we've been seeing before that though uh, I like to follow some sort of trend that we've been seeing on too. And for the most part at the beginning of this year, we've been seeing our decent leading gappers start to fail and kind of just fade off. Yeah. Uh, so on this one though, I was kind of expecting something similar to it. However, pretty early on at the open, we saw ready to green, which I liked. Uh, and then shortly after that, it started to sell off back down under $7 again. And then one thing, again, another trend that I've been seeing though is these low of days get caught up and then we get another ready to move out of it. So I was kind of waiting for that then too. And once we got back over high at that point, I was pretty bullish on it. But I kind of waited more so for it to start to curl and, and prove that it was going to hold. Interesting. I see on that one for me, I started trading it. Um, I missed that spike at 7 a.m. And I was really annoyed at myself because I was had set the intention that I was going to be sitting down to trade at 7 a.m. And then that morning I got held up, you know, things happened and I, I didn't, wasn't there. So I missed that 7 a.m. spike and basically sat down and was, you know, sort of like, I, I basically aggressively traded it between 7.15 and like, you know, 9.15. And I got green on it, but like, if we're going to be honest, like that wasn't the range where it was really moving, except for maybe like three candles around 8.15. It was basically like range bound. And then I kind of tapped myself out when we saw that false breakout at 950, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it like hit 950 and then it dropped all the way down to 850. And I was like, whoa, see, that's what I'm talking about. This thing is too risky. But then it came back up, blew through 950 and halted up at 1250. And I missed that whole thing and I didn't want to chase it. And I left all that on the table. You know, not that I didn't walk away green because I did, but I just felt like maybe I didn't trade it as well. I don't know. I, I was frustrated with myself. What did you do on that one, Danny? Um, yeah. So when you were just talking about where it it uh, it hit the high of like nine fifty, it dropped back down, and then it came back up. <laughs> that is kind of the main setup that I've been watching for lately. Is and Max was talking about it too. We have been seeing these bigger moves happen when something is chopping around and it tries to reject multiple times and it can't break down need to see it get bought up off the bottom a couple of times and then usually what we'll see is an attempt upward maybe it gets rejected um and then maybe we'll have like one more down tick that gets bought up into highs um so that's actually where i started trading in it um <clears throat> i forget about time of day but it was right around nine dollars it drops down to like 895 for just a tick it got bought up it made a bottoming tail and it went straight up that's it's phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah. It's on the yeah. it's on the one minute chart. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I actually didn't I didn't make 
really big profit on it. I did well enough. Um, I was trading pretty conservative size on it because of the range of the spreads. Um, I didn't expect that it would make that big of a move. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I didn't fully understand the risk and reward on it. Um, you know, it's, it's always easier to look back and say, oh, I guess that's why it squeezed a thousand percent on the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but those ones are really hard to trade when they're just going straight up halt to halt. It's like, where do you get in that makes sense? And, and how do you get in when they're moving so fast? Yeah. Uh, they can be really hard to trade and they can make a lot of emotions. And so like, if you got green on it, I think you just take it. Uh, if you were red on it or just a little bit red on it, it's just, it is what it is. Those are kind of outliers and, um, those can be pretty difficult. So I'm just going to admit, sorry, Danny. It's cool we say that though, because the, the halt, um, I did do pretty well on it profit wise, because the halt's up though in that period. I feel like every time it just goes from fault to fault, I'm chasing like crazy. Yeah. So I missed the entire move basically from 10 up to $16. And I was waiting for the pullbacks on us. Yeah. So kind of some of these setups though, just like that candle that you guys were just talking about, the, um, what was it, like a 10 and 28 candle, I think it was, that bottoming tail. That's a beautiful setup right there. That's a pullback after coming down from high a day. I think that's more of the setups that I've been looking for rather than the extensions, even though you can get a nice move up. They're a lot safer going. You're, you know, you're expecting a pullback and waiting for it. So when you get it, you you know what you're looking for. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I would say MSGM. I was trading it with you in the morning, Ross. Uh, you know, at seven a.m., seven fifteen ish pre market. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, I was trading it all through uh, all throughout the halts. You know, but the first one I made quite a bit, and then when it opened up, you know, the uh, right around Danny when you were saying that nine fifty, that you know, uh, the little pushed down below nine and then it started going up. When I saw that, I started trading it actively and then I was in the first halt and then I made, you know, I got really green. And then the second halt, right before it halted, I actually, uh, we made a new high and then on the way back, I took a pullback and I gave back 75% of my profits. Wow, dude. Oh. And that was the worst feeling, especially when I knew that, you know, I'm red. I was really good. I, you know, that could have, uh, that was going to probably put me green, uh, on the month. I'm not sure about that, but, uh, anyway, I was doing good. And then after that halt, I'm like, okay, man, so this is probably, I'm just going to be ha have to be okay with this. Let's just walk away. But then no, it wasn't done yet. It halts up again. And then I took that again and put me back where I was. <laughs> so, as you were saying danny this could be these are not I don't, like you know for those of you listening out there it's don't be don't feel like a loser if you didn't take part in this madness because you know it's not it, it's not going to bring good feelings to you even if you made a lot of money don't feel like you know all of a sudden you know how to trade now because you know this is not this is an outlier situation here this this does not happen every day right and that it happens once in a blue moon for sure and even then it could really punish you and then, so I made it back and then, and then later on, I was just trading it throughout the day because I'm like, then I was just, I think chasing percentages. That's yeah. what I was doing. I'm like, okay, uh, it's, it's at 700% now. So it's probably going to go to 800. It's going to yeah. go to 900. It's going to go to a thousand percent. So, and did it hit thousand percent on that day? I forget. It hit what, like 985 or something like that. Okay. So, and then I'm like, you know, it's definitely going to hit a thousand now. So I was buying some pullback. I forgot where, hmm. and that's where I gave like 40% of it back. And then I'm like, I'm done. This is good enough. I haven't, we haven't seen this momentum and you know, I was the, more than, I was more excited for the momentum I was going to bring. Yeah. And how much money I was able to make on the yeah. whole ticker on the madness that happened. I'm like, you know what? This is finally going to bring some new traders, some more momentum into the market. And tomorrow, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Whatever happened today, I'm just going to shove it under the rug and, you know, just brush it off. Yep. Whatever. I'm more excited for tomorrow. Yeah. 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 And it, 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 forward. We did, it did start, I mean, we, at least for me, I didn't have my biggest uh, green day of the year on that day or on that stock. Um I did okay on it, but it, it, you know, for a variety of reasons, I left money on the table, this and that. Uh, but I, I felt, I feel like we've sort of, I've been in this groove of hitting decent base hits and I hit some decent base hits on it. 
And I got a little over what I said as my daily goal. And I was like, you know, that's good. I don't want to overstay my welcome because I've had so many days where I give back those gains. I got emotionally activated and then it starts to spiral. And right now I'm kind of just like, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to be in the practice of trying to trade less. And I, I feel like there'll be a time when maybe we are seeing more opportunities and those are times I should stick it out. But and I think in hindsight, it could have stuck it out a little longer on MSGM, but you know, the, it's it's just so hard to know because like it happened to you, it went higher and then you managed to give back 75% in a, in a place where you would think that was even possible, but it can happen. That's the thing. And that's the worst feeling too. Yeah. I would, I would so much rather one of, so I was a swimmer in college and through my high school days and all of that. One of the best things that one of my coaches and friends told me one time was consistency over intensity every time. Cause you get, it's, it's so hard when you're just like trying to be so intense and trying to like nail the whole runs. And then you're just so emotionally activated and it's hard to not take that into the next day. Mm. It's, and you did a really good job of that last year, Ross, through the summer, you were talking about how you had kind of sized down, but then you had like, what, like 45 green days in a row. Yeah. yeah, no, I, you know, you're right. Yeah, it was that, that was, I was taking solace in the fact that even though I wasn't hitting big green days, I was having lots of small green days, but I, I did kind of get myself into a little bit of a thing where I was like, it's actually, I, I was telling myself, I was like, it's not hard to be green every day. And I'm going to preface with all my disclaimers here the trading is hard, but I got myself into this mindset where I thought it wasn't hard because my first couple trades I would sort of test the water with smaller size. And if I went red, I was red usually only a little bit. And so there was lots of time in the day for me to get back to green. Or if I went green, then I just kind of start scaling down right away. And so, you know, I, I did end up eventually having a red day and, and ending that, you know, long green streak. But I still finished the year being pretty consistent, even though I didn't have big, big green days. It was pretty consistent with small green days, you know, but, um, I, you know, I, I, you have to be careful not to get yourself too caught up about consistency because then you can get yourself into that its own mental trap of doing everything possible not to have a loss when really, if that doesn't matter, it's not a big deal. It's mm -hmm. totally okay to have red days. So it's, it should be in a, any good trading plan should include red days because they're going to happen. You're going to yeah. take red trades. You're going to have red trades, even if you're a really good trader. Yeah. yeah, but it's also, yeah, you know, as you guys are mentioning it, it's really, you know, our human, humans are not used to having red days, right? I mean, when you're planning for, right, let's say you're planning today, tonight, when you're watching this, you're planning for the next day's uh, uh, trading plan. You're like, okay, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take that, but, you know, your mind, your psyche is not going to let you, you know, foresee that in red day right you have to kind of force it it's your ego doesn't let you or you know you're fearful your yourself is not going to let you it's it's really it's hard to be okay with uncertainty right so you have to really yeah. take that uh make that a point that hey you know t tomorrow could be a red day and it's part of the game yeah how big of a red day i don't know that's based on that's based on a plan but you know you have to be okay with that uncertainty and that's what this game comes with I think it's also important, though, too, to understand exactly where you went wrong at those days. So understanding your loss, your red days, your red trades, I think that's also the most important part, though, too, because I think for us, the reason that we're profitable is because we are, you know, in a way, perfectionists, and we're always trying to improve in our strategy. So in order to do that, we must understand exactly where we went wrong and learn from it, though, too, to understand exactly what to do or what not to do you know, yeah. tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, for sure. No, that's a really good point. You, you have to be trying to learn from mistakes so it, it doesn't mean the thing is not every loss is necessarily a mistake because you know even the best traders are going to be right probably only 70 percent of the time maybe 80 percent. so 20 percent of the time you're going to be wrong and those aren't you shouldn't look at those as mistakes you should look at those as calculated trades that you took that were losers and that's totally okay but then there are also mistakes that you can make which is a day where you go from I don't know, like for me, so the day, at, the second day, MSGM day one, you know, I didn't do super well. And then day two, I sat down at my computer at uh, super early. It was, um, 
it was, well, it was, I wanted to be sitting here by 7 a.m., uh, but I was running a little bit late again. And so by the time I sat down, it was 6.58. And I didn't have my glasses on. I was just like turning on my computer and I was like, okay, what's what's moving? And I saw uh, MSGM was at $47 a share or something like that. And I was like, all right. I was like double take. I was like, for real? Oh my God. It was, it was up 200%. It was gapping up again. And so the second I saw that, I just like, I started pressing the buy button at 659 and it ended up um, squeezing up to a high of $52 and 64 cents a share. And then the next candle dropped all the way down to 45. It dropped like almost eight points in one candle. And I was holding full size. And you know what? God forbid they had dropped the news of the secondary offering at 7 a.m. That thing could have dropped 20 points. And that's exactly what did happen when they did drop the offering news, um, you know, a little bit later that morning, uh, it was, it was right here uh, for those looking at the chart. So like that was a spot where I made a mistake in my judgment call. It, you know, I took way too much size. I was too aggressive. I wasn't thinking about how it was a second day of continuation and you know, that profit taking at 7 AM. And anyways, so, you know, that was an opportunity for me. Fortunately, I was able to unwind the trade and finish green on the day but uh, those are the types of things that you don't want to brush under the carpet you really want to look closely at where you made a mistake and what you can do to try to avoid it but you know unfortunately there will be outlier trades like that every month every year probably where for whatever reason you know maybe it was just you got in the, the sort of the heat of the moment you made the wrong call and the cost was substantial and now you've got to recoup it. And it's frustrating how long when you're in the situation of like rebuilding an account with like small base hits, small base hits, small base hits. You have like 15 small base hits in a row and then in one day, give all, give all 15 days back. Yeah. That now is that we're, the one that we're talking on that day, I was building my account back up, you know, just small days, consistent green days. I uh, had a nice day on that MSGN when I made that 900% move. Next day, I got a little too excited and like, you know what? Yes, momentum is coming. So, I, like, you know, yeah, you know, most of us traders know that, oh, losing is part of the game. And we're always kind of aware of that in the back of our head. But, you know, a lot of times we don't realize that that could also happen. So I wasn't ready for a, green, uh, for a red day and I was trading VS when MSGM was going up. And oh, by the way, we'll talk about the, why did MSGM go up? after that offer, right? Well, we'll come to that. Okay. But I was uh, trading VS and I'm like, you know what? Next, the first day after the momentum, after a stock goes up hundreds of percent, this is going to go up. So yeah. I just sized in and, you know, I just started halting down and down and down. I don't know why I was holding a loser in all of these. I don't usually hold a loser. I'm really quick to cut off my losers, but I kept holding it and before I realized it was the biggest green, the biggest red day of the year. You know, small steps and then boom, it goes down, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the game. The problem with that one was it was so much sympathy to MSGM. And so when MSGM had the offering, it dropped immediately on that same candle. And then it did halt up at the open, but then it halted down one, two, three, four times in a row. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't expect that either. I was really surprised yeah. it went down that far. And that was a divergence because at the time, MSGM was had the offering. And I was thinking of HUDI this summer. So remember HUDI this summer? Yeah. They had an offering and it was at like 20 bucks. The stock at the time was trading at like 200. It instantly drops to like 20 bucks. And then it went way lower. I yeah. thought MSGM was going to go lower because I was like, oh, offerings at 21, but it goes yeah. from 21 all the way back up to 50. Yeah, 49.71. Yeah, I mean, so like 50 plus. I, and the, I mean, the, the offering was only 180,000 shares, which I was kind of surprised they only sold that many. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was weird. I don't remember if the HUDI offering was like way bigger. Uh, I think it was at twenty dollars or something. It was similar uh, price. How many shares? Right. Yeah. So I'm just putting up, pulling up the chart here of HUDI. I mean, this thing in one candle dropped from one hundred and sixty dollars a share, and so the offering price was around twenty, and you can see it didn't bounce all day. 
So that's when I was expecting what happened with MSGM. I didn't think it was going to bounce. I thought it was just done. But yeah, same. But it bounced. It bounced really well. And and yet, despite the fact that that was bouncing, BS, which was sympathy to MSGM, was holding yeah. down. So it was like I did not. I was totally confused. And that's why I was holding it because I'm like, look, the you know the no one was expecting this, and that's happening on MSGM. And while we're seeing this, you know, a relatively great move, good news and everything, VS, okay, two halts down, it's probably going to just make up for it all together after just, you know, halting again, because we've seen this action in the market before, and that's why I was expecting it. But, you know, that obviously I'd, to do that, I broke one of our rules is, you know, holding a loser. Yeah. Uh, so, and I got, you know, that one time I break that rule, I got paid for it. <laughs> it's great. I mean, yeah, you know what, though, I, I bet. I bet there's been some other times that you did hold a loser and end up coming back up, and those are like easy to kind of forget about. I mean, yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just like throwing it out there. Up, just, <laughs> but that was the time where it, it finally caught up to you, and it yes, that's a better way of putting it. It finally caught up to me. <laughs> but I've done that too. I mean, I've I've had I, totally. You know, I've had trades where I get stubborn, and I'm like, why am I still holding this thing? And yeah. And and that that for me, I start to get that even a little bit today on CELZ because I really thought. Uh, so you know, this is something that Manoli talked about when we hosted our summit. He was talking about themes, and so like um, yesterday we had SQL, right? So SQL makes this epic move from like forty cents up to a dollar a share, and then at the open, SQL squeezes up and halts. It was a really nice halt. So I'm going to show people this chart so they can see it a little bit better. My computer's kind of like glitching out here because I'm broad streaming and recording and everything else. But anyways, um, so makes this crazy, crazy nice move. And so, you know, I traded it yesterday, but I didn't do as well in it as I could have. Did you guys trade SQL yesterday? I did. I traded it with me around $2 pre-market. Okay. Uh, and a bit before that, but I'm doing this thing where I don't trade the top capper at the open. <laughs> <laughs> because I get chopped out, I get emotional. See, I, I think that's like a terrible, like, well, you know what though? You know what? Okay, at the open, at the open of 930, yeah. we are definitely yeah. seeing chop. And that's when you either see continuation into a hauled up maybe or yeah. haul down or red to green moves. So I'm okay with you saying at the open. As yeah, long as open after a minute, I just I just need to leave it alone for yeah. a minute. Sure. Well, okay. so anyway, so so I thought we were kind of getting into this theme where these like kind of sub one dollar stocks that break over a dollar, you know, squeeze up because CELZ felt really similar this morning, and so when it was at dollar forty, I was like, okay, I think this is going to gap. I think it's going to at the open squeeze into a halt if it breaks through one forty. And so I just started buying it and I took a couple of trades on it. I was sizing up at like one, you know, starter at 129, adding at 133, more, adding more at 138. It hits 139. It doesn't break. It drops. I was like, I'll just hold it because I, I really think it's going to gap and go. And, you know, I ended up giving back, um, I guess, I don't know, maybe half of my profit on the day. Not quite half. But anyways, uh, I gave back some and I, I you know, just said, well, I was getting stubborn and I was getting frustrated. And I was like, you know what? This is the spot here where it's time for me to walk away. Because if I keep trading now, I, I'm gonna be get, I'm gonna get careless and I'm just gonna say, you know what, I'll take thirty thousand shares and I don't care if I'm down, you know, three grand unrealized. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna wait for it to break. Or I'm gonna get flushed out and I'll hold down, and I'll be down six grand. And it's much better to be up, you know, whatever I am today, seventeen hundred than you know, down, down that much. It's just not worth it. So 18, whatever, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, so <laughs> last night, my wife, um, you know, we were going to go to Italy. Um, we, again, this year, and we've been going quite a bit and she's Italian. So, um, you know, she's been talking about, you know, we've sort of been a conversation of whether or not, you know, how how much I should be studied up on Italian culture. So we've watched Dan Bertucci's, you know, in Italy stuff, and that's been fun. And then last night she was like, let's watch Eat, Pray, Love. And I'd never seen it. Um, I'm not caught up on all of Julia Roberts movies. So I was like, okay. 
So we, we watched that. And they they were talking about the expression of the sweetness of doing nothing. It's an Italian expression, but I don't know how to say it because I don't speak Italian. And it struck me like, I was like, that's funny because this year, one of the things I've kind of been thinking is like, we're still in a bit of a bear market. I want to trade every day. I want to show up every day. But I don't want to stay here for eight hours a day. And yeah, sometimes when it's like, you know, I'm, it's 9.45 or 10 a.m. and I'm like, I'm done. I feel, I almost guilt trip myself to walk away. Like I'm so not, my, our culture is like, at least you know, my view of it is like, is so not being able to enjoy the sweetness of doing nothing. It's like mm-hmm. work, 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 hustle, you know. America, baby. And yeah, and <laughs> so like, that's been really hard for me to kind of come to grips with because the thing with trading is that that mentality of like, I need to even like out of stubbornness or out of guilt, keep sitting here. I don't think that that's really the way. And I mean, I don't know, you know, I, how many hours a day do you guys each trade? Like typically. Typically I've been going from lately Pacific time, like six ten, six fifteen, up until eight thirty nine. So like two hours plus ish. Okay. Yeah. I'm about the same day. I'm kind of like hour and a half, two hours after the open, but I'm also learning though from last year, just like, I mean, I, I sat down for, eight plus hours a day last year and I was over trading dig myself deeper and deeper and deeper and I didn't feel good about it either even for my green days I just felt like it was I was over trading just to get there it just didn't feel like, like quality trading to me so this year I really put not an emphasis on getting out early the tough part though is when I, there's really no momentum trying to leave early it's like okay well what do I do for the rest of my day now I, just, I don't know I feel bored when I leave too early so it's, that's kind of sometimes I get myself into staying though for that reason and neither do I find a hobby. <laughs> Max, Max, you're on. You're an hour ahead of me, so we're we're pretty early. So like, we'll be done trading at eight, nine in the morning when other people are maybe just going to work, and we're like, yeah, Max. exactly. Yeah, I'll usually I'll, I'll go to the gym. I bought myself a skateboard a few weeks ago. I've been trying to skateboard. I've been trying to do other stuff. I was doing the numbers the other day. I was. Um... You know, of course, I have people that work for me and stuff like that. And I was like, man, like maybe I should just do some of what they're doing. It would save me money. And I was like, how much would it actually save me? And I'm like, OK, well, you know, $30 an hour times eight. I'm like 240 bucks. God, it's nothing. And I feel bad. I'm like, man, <laughs> our trading is it really does get you spoiled. Because like it's so hard to imagine working like eight hours at right. that kind of hourly rate. So like the prospect of like either of you, like Max or Danny, like going and getting like a different job, job would be like, why even bother? It would fake, <laughs> it would like not even move the needle. Yeah. Not to say there aren't other things you could do that might be more lucrative, but that would require time. Like, I don't know, but real estate or something, you know, people talk about, but come on. What about you? What, what's your, cause you're on East coast time. So, yeah. So I, uh, recently, you know, I've used the gen live to my advantage and I get up super early at 5 a.m. Um, at the computer by six 30, okay. uh, or 7 a.m. You know? Yep. Um, and so I, so because I'm sitting early, I usually leave around 11 o'clock, uh, or like 10 30 sometimes. Cause I know right now that's the theme, like 10 30, everything's dead. And then, or like, and even starting like 10, 15 ish, everything just starts to die down. And then it picks back up later, like 11, 30, 12, but I'm not saving for that. So I'll four hours and then maybe half an hour to an hour later on. So average four hours, which is still a lot. I think I need to bring that. He's red on the year. <laughs> if someone's working, if someone's put in too many hours. You got to scale it down to like two hours. That seems to be yeah. the sweet spot. You're, you're working yeah. too hard. Poor him on. Yeah, it's well, see, the thing is, though, for me is the uh, the FOMO that I get when I see a big move that happens between 1030 and 12 or between, you know, whatever we like last week, we were seeing some good moves between two and four and even after hours. And Jess was like, do you think, you know, do you guys think we should be trading after hours or like afternoon? And I was like, God, I don't know. But like. I agree that there have been a couple of really nice moves. CETX, I think that one went from, I don't know, 7 to 15 or something. And 
I think RSLS did an afternoon move. And, you know, you see those and you're like, well, they're definitely moves. And I, we have someone was asking today about the moves that sometimes happen at 4 a.m. And they're like, should I be getting up at 4 a.m.? And someone else was like, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm up at 4 a.m. I watch them. The spreads are huge. The liquidity is yeah. terrible. You yeah. really can't chase it. They're only good for waiting to short the reversal. But, you know, that's that's all they're good for. And, and that still is risky, too. So I don't know. I How are you guys coping with missing some of those you know, <laughs> afternoon woes? Well, I'll tell me what. You know what is a good way to stop having FOMO or have less FOMO is take a trade from your phone at the gym and have it be your biggest red trade in January. <laughs> That'll that'll help. We <laughs> don't want to do it so much. Anymore. That'll teach you. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a mistake. That's definitely. And you know what? I'm really grateful. Lightspeed, you know, which is the broker that I'm using. There's no mobile app for it. Um, yeah. So I, um, you know, I, yeah, I I don't trade on my phone. I mean, I do have a TD Ameritrade app on my phone, so I have a retirement account there. But I don't. I'm not. You know, I, I just don't trade on my phone, like try to day trade. I don't. Freaking Das has a yeah. mobile application. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not as, like, it lags and stuff. But, like, you know, the level two on it is is really good. Yeah. I don't know if you should trade on it. And I, I'm not, don't even tell people. I pretend you guys just on a race with, and it just hurt. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to also can be such a, it can be such a hard part, but mm -hmm. I mean, over time, pretty much every time I've given into FOMO, yeah. I've lost or more often than not, when I give into FOMO, I've read on those trades. Yeah. And eventually you get to the point where you're like, all right, I see this moving kind of sucks that I'm not there, but like that's, I could be read on it too. Like that's the ultimate. Yeah, it's, it's, so maybe I'll catch it, but like I, it, I could be sitting in my computer right here and be ready for it. I could still be read on it. Yep. Yeah. So here's something that I do, and you know, part of the reason why I do sit a bit longer, only just a tad bit longer, is that I want to watch the screen with everything open. I just practice this for myself. I don't know; it might not be helpful for most people. I probably wouldn't be, but. I just watch the screen. I don't. I practice not taking a trip. Yeah. I just sit there and I practice, you know, just being present and being okay with you know everything being open because I feel like that gives me more control. That's right. Than just me walking away and just you know dashing out of here and then next day I see something. I feel like that gives me more fun with sometimes. Yeah. I have to be just okay with it that you know I'm here. I'm done. You can climb up another 100% whichever stock you are and I will be okay with it not taking you. I think once I start doing that, that has given me more so that calmness and just be, you know, just being it's present awesome. there. I, I I admire that. I find myself like with MSGM as it was going higher and I was, and I didn't trade it. So I was like, I'm going to exercise discipline. I said I wasn't going to get back in. I said I was done for the day. I'm going to be grateful for my gains and not trade it. But as it went higher, I started finding myself getting more and more frustrated. I was like, God damn it. And it just kept going higher and higher. And I was like, are you serious? I just watched this thing go from nine fifty to $25 a share. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> you know, that, so that's where, and then, and I didn't trade it. But then the next day I was like, so kind of like, I was just ready to fire yeah. and I fired hot. Yeah. So like, yeah. I don't know. I'm. I maybe I need to work on that, and that's. It might. You know. I. I clearly wasn't able to fully accept. You know, sitting and watching sitting. it. I was not okay with it. I wasn't. Yeah. Through, I wasn't there. But yeah. that's something I've worked on. Heard. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've found really interesting lately is I track my trades in Trader View, and um, I've been trading for over three years now, so. I don't always get the most insightful data on like things I'm really doing wrong or right at this point. Like it's pretty, pretty consistent and standard. But what I did find recently was um, I had read constantly on stocks that moved 500% the previous day. If I try to trade them the next day, I'm red. That's interesting. 
So yeah, it's like expecting continuation or I guess maybe like having expectations. Like right now we're not really in a continuation type market. Um, so one thing that's been helpful for me is I, tr I just try to find something new. Like when we've been looking at the same stock for a week, I'm like, I don't want to trade this anymore. I want to find something new. And usually something does pop up. It might take a few days or, um, one thing that's helped me with FOMO is like just the realization there's going to be another move maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. There's always going to be more moves. I don't need to get this one. Um, you know, just being patient and waiting for the right move to trade is the right thing to do. It can be yeah. hard. See, I, uh, I, I know about myself and I'll put my metrics up here for people that are watching this video. So basically for me, um, 90 plus percent of my profit is on stocks that have 500 times higher volume than the 50 day average. But I would say my profit is a bit more split between the volume today, which is the highest, uh, and the volume by the prior day. So I have a lot of stocks that, so basically to explain, um, the majority of my profit is on stocks that have also five times higher relative volume than the previous day. Um, but I have about, um, I don't know. So that that's the, that's the majority, but then like right behind it, there's a, they have, uh, about $3 million of profit. So like 30% of my profit is on stocks that have 50% of the volume of the previous day or less which means they're lower than the previous day. And those are continuation days. Yeah. So like, I, so 30% of that 10 million, give or take, is on continuation days. And then, you know, so I kind of have that inverted um, bell curve, I guess, where I've got a lot on the low relative volume versus previous day and a lot on the high versus previous day. But both of those are still five, five times higher than the 50-day average. So yeah, that continuation stuff, I, I find that I personally can do well like on day two but i do have to be careful getting into like day three day four day five keeping go up, going back to the well because that's when i sometimes find that i'm going too far but um it, we're we're coming up about an hour so i'm thinking why don't we end this episode um if anyone has any closing thoughts and then if you guys enjoyed this who are tuning in we can do this again soon uh so any closing thoughts on game plan for you know, the next couple weeks ahead. Me, I'm just keeping my head down. Um, I'm doing well. I'm going to try to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, the main thing I think it's doing well for me is just being really patient to try to get the entries that I know or at least think are the right ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to keep trying to do that. Keep cool. Keep ahead head down. Keep in my lane. Cool. That's my plan. Max? Yeah, pretty much the same thing as me. I mean, I look like... I want to continue to be done super early and not stay for the chop and get myself caught up in something that I don't like to be trading. Yep. Um, and so far, I'm not through a great start too. So I just want to keep you know, keep the train rolling and not really get caught up in what I've been doing and have expectations. So yeah, a couple of you know, the smaller days too. I'm okay with that then too. Just as long as they're consistent and then following my discipline. Yep. Among, what about you? Yeah, I would say, you know, being okay with that red day that if, if it, um, if and when it comes inevitably, and just trying to keep it small instead of sitting there longer and longer to just dig myself deeper, I think. You know, that's that's for me, and I'm sure it's going to help a lot of you out there. Cool. Right on. Well, thank you guys um, who have tuned in for this episode. Reminder, as always, trading is risky and our results are not typical. So take it slow. Whether you practice in a simulator or you trade on, what, what, let's see, what do I usually say? Practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. And whether you trade with me or you trade on your own, remember that trading is risky. All right, I'll see you guys uh, for the next episode real soon.